everybody! This week we're going to explore why the use of different kinds of articles can be uh, helpful for your research and how they can serve as helpful research tools in addition to books and other kinds of information sources. For the past two weeks you've been researching your chosen topics from a broader perspective using reference sources and books that provide background information and various viewpoints. And this is definitely a good way to start your research on most new topics. So now that you have an idea of some specific issues involved with your topic, you can explore one or more of them more deeply by using articles published in periodicals, such as we see here that are newspapers, magazines, and scholarly journal articles. As you'll learn through your activities and readings this week, uh, articles can help you learn more about current trends and research involving your top. In fact, and as you may have already experienced, you will be asked to look at research articles published in scholarly journals for research assignments you complete in other classes. Articles like this can help you stay current in research trends for topics that concern you professionally and personally, as well as academically. At the same time, articles published in other types of periodicals, such as newspapers, magazines, and blogs, can help you learn more about topics from a cultural and social perspective, and, and even consensus emerging from the general public. Throughout the term, I've been emphasizing how important reading comprehension and critical thinking skills are to our research processes. Finding information is just one part of using the information we need to figure out for our research questions and topics. We also need to actively understand and connect with the information meaningfully in order to effectively use it for our specific research projects. As a way to improve my ability to help students develop their reading comprehension and critical thinking skills, I've been studying metacognitive approaches to reading and interpreting texts. The term metacognitive basically means thinking about your thinking. What I mean by this is being aware on a deeper level of what we think something means why we are thinking this way and how we can question ourselves and the text to get to even deeper levels of meaning and understanding. This is all very important for dealing with complex texts such as research articles like we'll be doing this week and for better understanding who we are in relationship to what we're learning. And this is all what it means to be a scholar. To break down what I'm talking about, um, here are some examples of metacognitive approaches to reading and interacting with text. The first thing we see on this list involves making connections to what it is we're reading. This involves thinking about what we're reading in terms of what experience we may bring from our own lives to the topic we're researching and connecting to prior knowledge we may have on the topic that we're reading about. Next we have visualizing the text which is where we connect to what we're reading in a sensory way. We may for example visualize what we're reading in a particular way based on our experiences and what we're reading may also conjure other sensory connections such as smell, touch, and taste. This might sound strange, but when you think about seeing certain words or images on a page, such as like ocean, dinner, family, or college, you can think about how these words might heighten particular senses in you and based on the personal associations you have with them. Another way we can think more deeply about what we're reading is by making predictions in terms of what the author will talk about next in the story or article that we're reading. We can also think about how our predictions will change based on the information we gain from the text as we continue reading more of it. Of 
course, asking questions throughout our reading helps us talk to and engage more meaningfully with the text. Asking questions such as, what does this mean? Or how did the author come to that conclusion? As well as any other questions that come up for us when we're reading something is important for us to note and consider as we learn more about our topic. Summarizing is another very important practice for critical reading and thinking. Being able to restate the main points of what we're reading in our own words shows that we're really understanding, not just reading, what the text is saying. Being able to do this requires that we clarify what we read, and we can do this by rereading difficult parts of a text and using smaller clues to help us build upon our overall understanding. I'm betting this isn't the first time you've heard about some of these reading and critical thinking techniques, but it's so important for <coughs> excuse me. It's so important for us scholars and critical thinkers to make these practices our habit so much that they become second nature to us. We come across so many types of texts every day, from the things we read for class, to social media posts, to the news, to what we see on TV, just to name a few. And we need tools to help us evaluate the information being presented to us so that we can thoughtfully and conscientiously choose what is useful for us to know, what personal biases are affecting our understanding and viewpoints, and how we can go beyond the surface to more deeply connect with our understanding of the world. So this week, you'll be practicing these metacognitive strategies with the articles you find for your research. As part of the tutorials you'll complete for Module 5, Talk to the Text will model how you can do these metacognitive practices yourself when reading. Also, you'll be introduced to the metacognitive bookmark that you can download and use as a reading and critical thinking guide. The bookmark reminds us of ways we can more meaningfully interact with our text by predicting, visualizing, questioning, making connections, and applying other metacognitive approaches to make us more expert and scholarly readers. Finally, you'll be applying these skills to your article exploration assignment where you will be asked to report on two articles you select about your topic. And you'll be sharing about the reading comprehension and metacognitive approaches you applied within your discussion post this week when you share about your article findings and provide us an update of your, of your research. So there's a lot going on this week, but if you stick to the order of activities that you're being asked to complete as they are listed in Module 5, I believe you'll come away a more reflective, self-actualized researcher who is better prepared to use and critically think about the many information sources you come across. This will not only help you be successful in this class, but with other research projects and needs that you have in the future beyond our class. So I recommend you get started right away with your work for the week and keep in touch with me if you have any questions. Thanks so much. I really appreciate all your hard work this term.